everybody! My name is Erika and uh, in today's stream we are going to uh, continue the rigging of the character helmet which you are going to see in a bit. We already did basically the front version of this character. We just have to uh, finish its 3D effect on the face and uh, we should start rigging one of the other directions today. So get ready! So here is the character. I'm going to let you see uh, what this structure until now was. Uh, basically we rigged the front version of the character. We just need to finish the control here on the head so that also the uh, ears move in the back and so that this effect is more convincing. We also want to rig uh, the uh, additional eyes that uh, uh, the creature has, helmet, and uh, the additional mouth. And then we're ready to switch direction. So you see that uh, so far the effect is rather good, uh, but the problem is that some of these features here were just plastered on top, uh, but they are not following the way the face deforms. So we want to turn some of these images into meshes and the images that are already meshes we want to fine tune them to be more spherical. So that's what, you, what we are going to do now. Uh, to do that, for sure, uh, the one that gives away our effect is uh, this cheek here. Now I'm gonna simply turn them into meshes without editing them. So this means that they are simple meshes. So I will bind these two meshes to this bone here and the bone of the back of the head so that this is influenced by it. Uh, weights, bind, and then I select this bone for the front and this bone in the back, the head inverse one. And then I do the same on the other one here. All right, so it's both. I also want them to be inverted, so I'm gonna change it, fantastic. And now when we go in animate mode, yeah, because I change the weights of this, it's all distorted. So we change the weights so they are fully um, influenced by the cheekbones. Oops. Next, I select just these two vertices and I make it more spherical so that it never, go never goes out. Now if we want to um, go fancy, and we totally could, you know, to retain this shape better because it's a bit flat, it's a bit triangular at the moment, we might want to add a couple vertices. I wanted to edit the mesh, so I'm gonna do it now. I'll create just one vertex here, yeah, two vertices. And then I'm gonna add another one here, there we go. I'm going to change the weights so I can raise the influence here and I can make this one a bit softer. And that's where the fine tuning really begins. Now I want to do similar treatment on the other cheek. So one, two, and wait, five percent. Okay, so now it's the same value. We finished the cheek and now it's more spherical. Uh, now we're gonna also change the weights so that these eyes here follow more the shape of the head. Oh, okay. So I got to a nice value here. So now I'm gonna change these also to a 49. Let's and the fine tuning, which was really fast, by also adding some influence of the uh, backbone on the ears. I think I'm gonna just add the uh, bone to the ears like this. Yeah, I'm gonna try that. So we are going to bind the back head inverse bone to this ear. And we're gonna do the same also on the other ear. And now we're gonna try the cheap way first, because cheap way always. And we just select everything and we raise the influence here a little bit so that it's following 
head inverse like this much so i'm gonna add five influence to all of the vertices here and then i'm gonna select here these vertices and add a little bit more like 55 so it matches of influence here and it's even too much yeah i kind of like it so 52 it is now we are going to try to weight some more uh, parts like the another mouth for this and then we are gonna switch uh, on a different perspective of helmet which is the juicy part the interesting part on how to do this kind of rigs uh, let's see so we have one nose maybe we have the amazed face on, and that's what happens when it's animated we could repair the nose to the features holder. Now that's what being lazy is like. Yeah, that's totally flat, but it would do the trick so that we have we can avoid we can avoid uh, having to rig all of these faces. Yeah, what do you prefer to do? Rig the new direction. Okay, so I'm gonna end the poll at this point since it's decided. Now we are gonna uh, activate first the new direction of this rig. So we're gonna go ahead and activate the southeast direction, so the three quarters view. I find that it's easier to deal with this when we activate the slots. No, not this loss really, but the attachments view here, so I can see it. No, no slots at all. Okay, so I only see the attachments in this case. And um, this is actually good because I could just um, go on the southeast here and activate them. So like this, I select them all and then I press H. To make them active yeah okay that worked now we can see that most of it is already in a good uh, position except for the ears the eyes the muzzle mm, I mean the middle parts are fine but we have to correct the places of the other parts of the features we want to reuse the same bones that we already have but these bones are in the wrong position so we'll have to move the bones in a new position to match these images. But what happens is that when I try to move this bone to match this uh, eyebrow, it moves. And if I try to compensate, that would ruin my setup pose because I still want it in the front position. Then how do we store new positions when the setup pose is already occupied by the uh, south position? What we want to do is we create a new animation that we are going to call turnaround, or, but you can call it anything else, of course. And we are going to store the various poses in this turnaround animation to use uh, on need and copy and paste them from this animation to the other animation so that we quickly can activate or deactivate the right slots uh, by simply copying and pasting the whole pose in a new animation. So let's go ahead and uh, do just that. We're gonna create a new animation. So I go on animations, new animation. I'm gonna create my new turn around animation. If you can use meshes, uh, the easiest way is to create meshes in this set up pose here first and then instead of binding them while we are in setup mode which would mess it up we bind these new poses in animate mode when the uh, after we make the bones match the position with the meshes that we created so uh, for this to work though when we create a mesh, for example, for the eyebrow, so I'm gonna make a very quick example, we're gonna 
Head to setup mode, we create the mesh, so now the eyebrow has a mesh, right? Um, we said that if we move this in setup mode, it's gonna in setup mode it's gonna be a disaster. So instead we go in animate mode, and if we move it here, it's gonna move just the same. So we need to first select the eyebrow here, and we no not edit the mesh, but we weight it to a bone that does not move. A bone that is perfect for the job is the root bone because you normally wouldn't want to move the root or it's it's the bone that it's less prone to be moved let's say it like this so now that it's weighted only to the root even if i move this bone in setup mode the eyebrow is not gonna follow it anymore so we are gonna take this and uh, i don't know we are on frame five we move the bone to match the new eyebrow position, then we select the eyebrow and we bind it to this bone here. We click bind. Ah, yeah, it's not gonna follow it just yet because we have to change the weights so that it follows the eyebrow and remove the root. We can leave it, but I'm gonna remove it in any case. So now when we go back in setup mode, the eyebrow is following the bone and it changed position in setup. This is why your turnaround animation is treated as if it were a second setup pose. It's a sacred place where uh, you don't want to move bones around except for setting up the pose. That's why it's so important that you use this only as storage for new poses because when you want to revert or you want to change the weights or you want to do anything else uh, like adding, adding new vertices or changing the weights or anything you want to do it from the correct frame of this turnaround animation. Otherwise, you're gonna um, have the, the vertices, like if, for example, let's say that we have this. So we are on frame three instead of frame five. When we change the weights, which we can do because we only have our eyebrow, but if we had, for example, we are on frame five, we bind uh, um, the root back in, uh, just for the example, right? And then we go on frame three and we change influence to the root, we see it moving. And we will see it moving in any position that is not that frame of that animation. So when you change vertices and your mesh is moving, it means that you are not in the setup pose of the mesh. But as said, this, uh, this setup of the mesh could actually be inside an animation. Um, this is why also you want, when you are in setup and you need to move a bone into a new position, you want to update the bindings for the mesh in case uh, you um, meant to keep it where it was. I already explained this uh, when uh, we rigged the uh, t-shirt in the first stream or the second one, I don't remember. So the importance of the turnaround animation, it is very important. You want to store those new positions in the turnaround, you want to maybe also remember uh, where everything is placed, like if you set it on frame 5, you don't go and rig something on frame 3 from that same uh, animation because that would yield uh, some bad results. In case you don't want to have everything turn into a mesh, but you want to apply uh, the new position without having to go crazy, uh, you first turn everything into a mesh and then when you don't want something to be turned into a mesh, uh, you apply this uh, uh, procedure that we saw earlier. And then when you get back to setup mode, you uncheck mesh and it will stay where we have decided it uh, should stay. So we're gonna go ahead and turn everything into a mesh from this direction. I'm gonna leave this. Also, if you are already familiar with the turnaround uh, uh, eight direction character that I did a while back, it was already two years ago, I guess. Well, in that case, we didn't have update bindings uh, um, 
and meshes didn't quite work as they do now and we didn't have the search button here because another way to to do this if in case you don't uh, have these pieces all sorted but they are mixed then you can type in what you want to find like in this case and then you can automatically select them so i don't have to go and select everything by myself um, by pressing um, shift no uh, wrong one then it was control and enter to select them all so i just really wanted to show you that kind of workflow but we can always do it this way so we're gonna des deselect the mesh that we already had so that since they are all of the same type i can turn them into meshes like this i also want to make proper meshes what, what was i doing so fast this is me being italian so we're gonna go and create meshes for all of these pieces the ones that require it at least so this is southeast ear and this ear is just gonna be present for every damn direction well it's not that difficult to rig this ear it's just a lot of vertices okay so now i add the inner vertices here cool so these ears are the single part that has likely the more vertices and that it's the most complicated of this rig but beyond that the ears are pretty chill otherwise now we can bind them to the root while we're at it i'm gonna also just gonna go and edit this one so you can already appreciate that this one has a different perspective in this case and i'm pretty sure that this is not a horn but it's gonna go behind his head in this case for once so that's when the draw order will kick in and change okay here and i'm gonna add the inner vertices once again i'm trying to make them equally distanced the more equally distant the better but if you're not super precise nobody's gonna kill you in any case so you see i'm kind of going fast on this but i'm trying to respect the lines of the drawing okay so i replicated this i'm gonna bind it to the root so these ears can be also changed i'm gonna add it and make a new one i'm gonna follow the same principle that i used to rig it in the other direction okay there we go now i'm gonna add couple vertices inside at the side of the main features as always and following the lines then perhaps i add just a couple points here to help convey the shape there we go now this is quite uh full of vertices but is it's probably the um mesh that it's gonna sell the 3dness of this direction the direction is of course gonna be a bit more limited in the movement that it can do but it's gonna expand on the overall directions that this uh, rig can take we're also gonna need to repeat the um, mesh of the head here all right so i created an inner circle here i just have to establish and i'm gonna try to make it more symmetrical in some ways because i had to add these two vertices to follow this line otherwise i wouldn't have needed it particularly yeah let's see and check if this can work yeah but i'm not gonna bind it just now so i'm trying to uh grind all the meshes first uh, so that we can then go bam 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 and um, rig them all to the new direction okay so i'm creating a new mesh for the arm nice so this should be okay and i'll bind it to the root for now i'm gonna also edit this mesh create a new mesh excuse me 
look at this little bar all right so this is cool looking and i'm gonna bind it to the root now of course there are also some pieces that are in front but should not be in front they make sense for the setup pose so they look correct in setup pose but they look wrong in other directions so that's also why it's so convenient to um, be able to store the new draw order in an animation so i can also move this one to the back of the head so it looks more correct go on with this and i'll edit this mesh to new uh, the spine logo is gonna be an interesting thing to make also i'm sure that for at least one of these meshes i'm gonna make a mistake and i'll have to modify the mesh and then i will show you the procedure to edit meshes when they are in a different pose than the setup pose i'm gonna try to make this into a straight line so that it deforms better okay and i'm gonna bind this to the root as well let's hope we got it right because this little cr crucial part is this one uh here close to the arm and i'm not sure if this is gonna be good but i'm gonna see how this performs I hope I didn't create too many unnecessary vertices. Uh, create a new mesh for the other slip too. Maybe a vertex here so that it follows this fold and another one here so that it follows this fold. And let's hope that this works. Leg. First try to make a straight line. Another mesh click quickly done. In hopes this is so this is the southeast cheek. I'll edit the mesh so that it's similar to that other mesh that I had of the cheek. That should be it. So now that I made meshes for basically everything, I'm gonna switch to animate mode and just fix a little bit of the draw order that we have. This eye here is in the wrong position. I'm gonna push it down. Okay. So it's behind the chin. And here comes the interesting part where, as we said, to recap, we just created meshes for everything. Because we turn, first, we turn the new direction images all on by filtering the tree on the attachments so that they were sorted alphabetically and activating the correct direction thanks to the fact that we used the prefix to signal the direction that we were using. Uh, then we turn everything into a mesh. We uh, want to bind them, we need to still bind everything to the root. So I'm gonna make sure that that is done for every single image so that if we move a bone around it's not gonna mess up with our other images so that's the part that is missing and then we are going to reposition the bones and bind the images to uh, the new bone position in the un turnaround animation at the correct frame all right we have a plan so i'm gonna go in order to make sure that every single image has this root bound to it what is this okay we're gonna bind you to the root what is this we are also gonna bind you to the root and okay this Yes, we completed the binding of all these images to the root, finally. So we can switch to animate mode and start repositioning the uh, bones. So now if I move this, 
the eyebrow is not following anymore and I can even rotate it to have it match better the uh, angle of this eyebrow after I'm done with it I'm just gonna bind the eyebrow to this bone and I can remove the root I always need to make sure to be on the right frame of this animation otherwise it's gonna be a disaster in the end so I'm gonna move this here and the rotation of this is more like this cool and the rotation here so it was here I'm gonna move it here so I'm binding it to this two for now now I'm removing the root so for this I want to make sure that these images are in the correct place so here's the nose I'm gonna match it with the nose here ah oh, I should have figured that this would happen I can copy the position that I have here and then I'm gonna move the nose and then I'm gonna not nah, the nose I said the nose and then I'm gonna paste the position there yeah, this looks fine so I'm gonna copy and while in world coordinates paste ah I inverted them I did invert them how they were and then I select wrap this first oh and now it looks good so it's important that you replicate uh, you select the bones in the same order where you select uh, that you used to select them the first time otherwise this is gonna happen okay so they are back in place this is good this cheek here supposed to be here or something this cheek is supposed to be here well I do hope I have the correct oh so it was here and in this case I'm centering it southeast south that's as good as any other place so I'm gonna keep it as it is oh yeah the arm the arm is gonna be interesting I'll just move it like this to the side oh that looks good okay I expected a bit more difficult but it's actually simple I'm almost done I think I just missed here the belly the belly bone the model here is already in the correct position what's this the cheek yeah I have to differentiate the colors of these otherwise it's gonna be hard to tell the cheek is the cheek okay so it's in some colors uh, I wanted to create the IK constraint so that then we can have it uh, set for the correct direction so I'll create a new IK constraint. Ah, yeah, I can't create it until uh, these two targets are parented to the root, uh, are parented to the legs, and I'm gonna parent them to the root instead. So I select one leg, the other leg, new IK constraint. I select the target here, and I'm gonna do the same new IK constraint here. I select both and I translate them so I'll turn this into minus 25 and this into 25 25 here oh I should have known let's see because this is a problem that you might also encounter like you want to change the position of this leg but if you do then it bends uh, I think I'm gonna do this I'm first gonna deactivate the influence of this uh, IK for both of these IKs so mix influence zero now I can position my bones wherever I want so I'm gonna place them exactly where I want them so I rotate this how I expect it to be rotated want it more in the middle so more here and I'm gonna rotate it here so it matches 
what I'd like. And this makes me see where the IK should be. Now I think that for this specific case, it's useful to have a dummy, um, a dummy bone to copy and paste the position from. So I go in setup mode and basically make a copy of this little target. So I make a new bone. Ah, I have to be in parent axis, then create a new bone. So it creates it at the tip. I'm gonna do the same here. And I'm gonna use these bones to uh, perfectly place the, the IK so that these two bones remain perfectly straight. Okay, so I like this new position. So I'm gonna, I'm not just gonna demonstrate this. So if I reactivate the IKs now, they're gonna be pointing there. If I do it on this one, perhaps it's more visible. It changes direction. Yeah, of course it does. Okay. I actually want to copy the position of this bone and this, well, copy them. And then I'll paste them on the IK targets. So they are, oh yeah, I have to choose world axis. So they are placed precisely where I want them. I'm gonna remove the rotate key because I don't like rotation keys out of nowhere. I'm gonna get rid of these two bones at the end. They are just here uh, to facilitate the work. So now if I reactivate the mix, it's gonna stay what it is without moving. After doing that, oh yeah, I need to bind that here and remove the root and bind this here and remove the root there. And save, a bit long, I'll bind also these two so I can begin simulate uh, that direction. Also, wow, I didn't even notice that it's almost six. So we probably won't be ending this direction for today. I'll bind these two. I'll bind these two. Also have to remember to remove the root. And now we're gonna wait it in the next stream since today is already over. All right, so I'm gonna just make a recap for the people that maybe tuned in later. We, uh, in this stream, we finished the effect, the 3D effect on the face uh, in the front. Then we started rigging the southeast direction. Um, we turned all, all the, uh, first we turned on all the alternative images. We created a turnaround animation. And uh, in that turnaround animation, we, after, uh, turning all the images into meshes and bounding them to the root, we began moving the various um, bones so that they match the images of this new direction. And then binding these images in animate mode to store the new position for the current frame of the current animation, this turnaround animation. So, uh, I hope this was uh, an interesting food for thought, let's say it like this, um, and that it can uh, help you with your uh, turnaround characters, which I know are very complicated, um, but they, um, once you uh, get to rig these characters in this uh, new direction and you spend so much time on the setup, you are going to be so glad because the possibilities that uh, this uh, kind of rigging opens are really like you can mix the various uh, arms from different directions, heads from different directions, um, mix and match for uh, really having much more freedom than having separate skeletons for each direction, which may be easier, but you lose on the fact that you can mix these various parts. Also, this is useful when adding alternative poses. So when uh, these uh, little 
I was about to say bunny, but it's a dog. <laughs> uh, when this little dog needs to have a specific pose and an image doesn't quite fit, you can export a PSD with layers and then uh, create a new piece. You go back to the animation at that frame and then you bind the piece with the same technique that we did today. So don't forget that. That's super useful in that case. Um, and it opens really, um, it, it's like binding the, to the images, to what you need as an animator, rather than you animator having to be limited by the position of the images that you have. So that's really why I think it's so uh, nice and important that we learn to use these turnaround features. Uh, that we learn how to rig a turnaround character. But I hope you found this useful. Uh, next time we're gonna go deeper in this uh, with how to modify a mesh that you already created, how to wait all these meshes for the alternative uh, pose, in this case alternative direction. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Bye!